Senate President Ahmed Lawan has said that due to the worsening insecurity in the country, the nation's corporate existence has come under threat. Speaker of the House of Representatives Femi Badabiamila similarly said Nigeria is under attack. The two principal officers of the National Assembly spoke as President Muhammad Buhari lamented that insecurity and other social vices are challenging Nigeria's quest towards nationhood and threatening the desires to achieve his ambitions for the country. Well, joining me to discuss this is Dr. Law Mefo, his Director, Public Affairs, Igbo Leadership Development Foundation, and also we have Uche Chute. He is Chute, I beg your pardon. He is a social commentator. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having us on your show. Great, great. So, Uche, I'm going to start with you. I mean, um, the Speaker of the uh, National Assembly of, uh, sorry, the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabia Mila, has said that we've come to a point where we should stop the name calling and the bulk passing and start um, uniting. He said that we need to band together to deal with Nigeria's problems. But again, in that same breath, let's look at the government and the leadership of the APC and how they've responded to the situation that Nigeria is going through right now. Does the body language of the APC-led government show that of banding together, coming together, peace and unity and, and you know, discussing the way forward? Or is it still on that phase or in that phase of bulk passing and name calling? It's still bulk calling, name calling. Uh, the government of Nigeria is not serious. We lost, unfortunately, may so rest in peace, the chief of army staff. And he was supposed to be replaced under normal circumstances by there are several candidates who were next in line. And but it's also happened that the people who were next in line were from the south, southern part of Nigeria. And the president skipped all of them and appointed a northerner, now ensuring that those qualified people from the south now have to be retired, you know. And this is a country that is talking about banding together. So there is no sincerity, you know, there, 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 there's nothing about sincerity about banding together. It's the bigger, it would have been a big win to appoint someone from the south, you know, who was rightfully supposed to be put there as a chief of army staff to send the right, the right signal. You know, so because like we, we know what's happening right now, we know about the tensions in the in the country, and the speaker of the house and the, the senior president, they're also being very insincere. They they know their constitution. I'm assuming they know their constitution. The job of the president is to you know protect lives and property and show security of the nation. And he's basically, if they, if they were serious, they would have started organizing an impeachment of the president right now. But they're not. They're talking. They're holding prayers and sessions, security sessions. Start planning the impeachment. The, the president clearly is not able to secure the lives and property of Nigerians and is not able to provide for their welfare. So that's that if you do that, then we know you're serious. But right now, I don't think they're serious. I'm I'm curious because you started by saying that um, you know the southerners should have been, you know, uh, as the chief chief of army staff and all of that. But is it really about the, where the person's from? Is it about the zones? Is it really about you know, the fact that people have said that the president has double standards when it comes to dealing with people from certain other regions of the country as opposed to the people in his region. Or is it about just people doing their jobs, whether they are from the north, the south, the east and the west? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to understand, should we just solely put it there and say, well, that's why we have ethnic tensions? Is it does not go beyond that? I, you know, I, I really wish that was the issue. Like, you know, we, we're giving the president six years already to just say, you know, we're giving the benefit of the doubt, appoint competent people. We don't care where you're from, whether you're from the South, North. But for the past six years, we've, we've had nepotistic appointment after appointment, and each of these appointments have been incompetent people. Burratai was appointed, was incompetent in every form or manner, and he managed to stay there as chief of army staff for six years. The new guy came in and... He barely spent, I don't even know if he spent up to like six months and everything, and now he, he, he's passed away. We've never even addressed that, that issue, and no security reports have told us exactly what happened to him. And now we have someone else who is, who is coming, and the only reason for his appointment is not necessarily his qualifications, because Gabba Shewu shared his resume, and there was nothing on the resume. The highlight of his resume is that he spoke Spanish. Do, do we speak Spanish in Nigeria? Is that, what we, is that our problem right now in Nigeria? There are more qualified, more competent people who are supposed to be appointed, who are his senior, who were passed over for the job. 
So, so what are you saying? You're not appointing the best person for the job. You're just appointing someone because he's from a certain part of the country and he's from a certain uh, religion. That's unfair. That doesn't help. It doesn't help our situation. We need the best person who can provide can secure lives and property right now. We're facing attacks from several places. You know, the Northeast with Boko Haram, with ISWAP and all those different things. The Northwest, the banditry and kidnapping. The North Central, the clashes between headsmen and people. The Southeast now, we have like unknown gunmen. This is in addition to the clashes between headsmen and the people in the Southeast and the Southwest. The South South, they have the Niger Delta militants who are still there. They're still, you know, revving their, 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 their guns, you know, and waiting to explode at any given chance. So we, we need someone who can handle the situation on ground, you know, and we don't have that. I keep asking every time when I talk about the issue of insecurity in Nigeria, I keep asking if really um, what we're seeing and the responses that we're getting is a show of failure on the part of the president or on the part of the leadership of this country. And I'm talking about both the upper house and the lower house, the governors, the, the state houses of assemblies, uh, because... Of course, yes, we know that the president is the president of this country and then the, it's the power at the center thing. But what, I mean, we've seen the southern governors take a stand, uh, you know, when it comes to banning open grazing. But is that at the heart of Nigeria's problem? Because we well, have agitations in the southeast and that is not necessarily at the heart of the problem of Nigeria. We have several other issues. We have ethnic tensions with undertones i just finished a conversation with um, a group of people or talking about a group of people who are asking for self-determination and they are in the southwest uh, and this is not news of course but what is really at the heart of this issue that we are seeing brewing today because of course we know we have like you have named all of the issues peculiar in the different segments of the country but what really is at the heart of this issue that we need to address before we start with the other ones the heart of the issue really is the constitution the nigerian constitution which we praise it from 1999 it's the big problem uh and and this it's it, for example it puts in too much power with the commander in chief he's the commander in chief of the armed forces the governors have no control over police over army over no one they can't do anything. They, I mean, a, a commissioner of police with orders from Abuja can refuse to listen to the governor of, of, of a state and nothing will happen. So the constitution is not right. It's not working. And that's why you're going to have all these nationalism claims, things about state policing. It's, it, it's, it's too much responsibility for the federal government and they can't, they, they can no longer handle it anymore. It's, it's, it's beyond them. So we need to talk about this. I, I'm happy about that we're going around the nation talking about the constitutional review right now and um people are getting input from all you know all all zones all geographical zones across the nation and hopefully we'll have something we, we can have some kind of amendments that, so we can have a working solution for us so we all feel part of a, a nigeria and, and it's, it's a secure nigeria whereby our lives and property are guaranteed so the constitution is a big problem uh-huh. Uh, Mefo, uh, Law, thank you for joining us. I, I, I want to quickly, you know, push you on this same thing. A lot of people still are saying that the presidency and leaders of this country need to address the core of Ni the Nigerian problem um, before we can deal with other issues that have become like, uh, uh, you know, that has turned into a hydra-headed monster. What do you as a person think is the, at the core of the problems that Nigeria is facing today? Did it start under the Buhari administration or did it just get worse under him? And why is it taking so long for it to be dealt with? Yeah, thank you for hosting me. I think um, the problem Nigeria is passing through now, now uh, is a, emanating from two essential factors. Number one is leadership. Number two is structure. We don't have the appropriate kind of leadership at all levels. Because if you have proper leadership in place, they'll be able to address even the structural problems. We are not able to have this sorted out because the leadership has continued to show a, a, a gross level of, a, of a ineptitude, if I may use that word. Structure is also a big issue 
because Nigeria is a federal environment. Nigeria is made up of at least 250 ethnic groups, speaking about 527 distinct dialects, if not languages. 200 million people. Now, you have a constitution, 1999, even after amendment, still keeps the federal government with 68 items as exclusive to federal and only about 16 to states on concurrent basis, which means that the federal government can also legislate. Beyond this also, the constitution provides that where the laws made by the states are at variance with the ones made by the National Assembly, that is the federal government, the laws made by the states are declared incompetent in advance, null and void to the extent of your inconsistency with the provisions of the federal law. That's where the problem is. What this means is that we are running a unitary system in a federal environment. When you talk about insecurity, it's expected that there will be insecurity because to secure a place, you need very local content. You cannot bring somebody from a uh, Boronu state, Kanuri, and expect him to perform wonderfully in a local uh, village in Anambra. You know, let, and vice versa. But, let's, these, but, let's these, but these, people, those, these people don't fly in and out of those spaces. They live there. They become a part of that society. So it's, I mean, they integrate. And so it, it should be easier for them. I, I'm not in any way We're, we're trying not talking to... about integration here. Well, but Listen, that's what happens. Our police officers are posted to places and then they finally, you know, integrate, even though sometimes they're not allowed to stay for too long. But they find their way around, don't they? Let, 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 me, let, me, let me tell you. For you to integrate yourself into a place, there are psychological and sociological processes that must take place. You have to learn the language. You have to imbibe the culture. So you don't just integrate like that without having mastery of the language, mastery of the culture. That's the problem. Now, in all federal environments, everywhere in the world security is local you have to have local police state police even institutions have their own police so you do not expect nigerian police force to effectively police nigeria from abuja it's not possible that is why you, you we were there boko haram terrorism grew under our nose. Now they are metamorphosed into banditry. There are other fault lines. Ungoverned spaces are growing. Go to the Southeast, which until two, three months ago was the most peaceful part of Nigeria, is now the home of unknown gunmen. Go to Southwest. Go to Middle Belt. See what the headsmen are doing. You know, see, you need to allow people to take charge of their life and destiny. Okay. So you, you must allow people to secure themselves. How, how do we tend to do to this? I'm sorry, we do not have so much time, um, Mr. Law. Yes. But I'm just curious because we need a solution in the interim while we plan for the future. In the interim, we have pockets of violence almost everywhere. We have agitations almost everywhere. We have yes. governors who have decided to regionalize themselves and take decisions at that level. What do we do in the interim? And I'm going to ask my other guests the same question in closing. What do we do to deal with these issues in the interim? We need solutions for the now. The solution is relatively simple. We need to have a national dialogue is inevitable, it's inescapable now, so that we'll understand what people really want out of the Nigerian Federation. You need that now, and it can be done in the next three months. Okay, all right. Very, very fundamental. Okay. All right, Uche, um, you just heard him. He's talking about the national dialogue, and we've had many.
I mean, we've had one under the Abbasanjo administration. We had one under the Good Luck administration that was also tossed. We even have had some form of restructuring committee that was led by the governor of Kaduna State. It's been tossed. It's gathering dust somewhere. I mean, we're calling for another one so Nigerians can tell you what they want. What's the guarantee that we can move forward with this? And how do we solve? What is your solution um, for this moving forward? My solution is that the present government right now in place cannot do anything. Like they have the, they don't have the lack of capacity, the competency, the intention, the uh, wherewithal to do anything. So even if you give them a blueprint of what to do, they won't do it because it's almost as if it's in their interest that this insecurity pervades our nation. I, I don't know, like almost as if it's very deliberate, you know, to create this sense of a state of insecurity for them to further their agenda. And but I'm sorry, this government the... actually campaigned, you know, because they, uh, under the Good Luck administration, they did say that they were going to bring us some sense of security and deal with Boko Haram. Uh, and if you're saying or implying that it seems like they even enjoy, almost enjoy what's happening, that seems to be an, op an opposite of what they actually intended for us in closing. Yes, it is. And at this point of time, but, um, the, the Speaker of the House and the, the state, uh, pres um, senior president should please become be, be honorable men and do the right thing and begin impeachment processes against the president at this point of time. He's incapable of, of securing this nation. Let's remove him and let's have somebody else come in and who can actually secure this nation. All right, Uche Chuta and Law Mefo, thank you very much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Okay, thank you very much. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We will take a short break now. And when we come back, I will give you my take. Here's my take. Here we are again, uh, talking and jaw-jawing about the issue of insecurity in Nigeria and uh, people asking for good governance. This is the major thing that everyone in any entity called a country is asking for. The reason why people line up in, under the sun, uh, in the rain, to make sure that they cast their votes. They, they want a better life. And the most constant thing in life is change. And the change that Nigerians are asking for from its leaders is that we stop living under uh, some form of a dictatorial rule where only what our leaders want for us should be king. Nigerians are asking for a better life, in other words. They do not want to be wallowing in poverty anymore. They do not want to be living a, a terrible and hard life. Nigerians are asking that they go to bed with their eyes closed and not worry that somebody's going to come in and slaughter their whole families. Nigerians are asking that we have free, fair, credible elections, that we do not have thuggery and ballot box snatching. Nigerians are asking that the basic amenities that every person on the face of this earth deserves should be given. They're asking for their right to life. They're asking for their right to associate. They're asking for their rights to be able to speak up and demand the dividends of a democracy because that's what we think that we're running. But all of this just plays out like water on the back of a chicken because it seems like our leaders no longer hear us. So where does this leave us? Where do we go? Who do we call to? America and the UK cannot help us because Nigeria's problems need Nigeria's solutions. How long are we going to keep calling on the UN and calling on the UK and the US? They have their own problems. Do you see them calling us to come and do it for us? So if we have competent leaders, if we have people who really have, you know, Nigerians at heart and they promise to lead us, all right, these people need to feel those shoes and begin to act like they really want to push Nigeria to the best place that it would want to be. We cannot keep say, referring to Nigeria's problems. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at history books and some of the things that our leaders complained about 25 years ago, we're still complaining about it in 2021. Does that not shame us as a country and shame the people who we call leaders? It's time for us to awake from our slumber and do the right thing. I am Mariana Cole, thanking you for watching.